welcome everybody to the next video. Uh, I know it's been a while, uh, so just uh, to let you know why uh, I caught COVID, so I had to take a break because my voice didn't uh, didn't allow me to take any videos. But yeah, I'm back in in, in good health, so uh, should be should be able to continue this uh, tutorial series and yeah, deliver some of the videos uh, in the following week, so we can complete it and maybe see what we can do next. Cool, so um, last time we did the rocks, which uh, look great. So let's just zoom out and take a look uh, what we did. So that looks good. So something that I want to work on this time is the camera. And as you can see, the scene craft changed a little bit. So still have my perspective camera. I also imported the cinematic camera from the other scene as a comparison. So we know what the target is, what we're walking towards. And I also imported the lights because they are very heavily dependent on exposure and other things that we uh, set up in the camera. So we need that to balance it a little bit. Although I know usually the lights will be created after the camera. So, um, but yeah, I want to show you that example. So you know that it's interdependent and it doesn't make sense to create one without respecting the other. Uh, but for the separation of the tutorials, I want to focus on the camera piece today and the lights then next time. Yeah, so you can already see that we have our perspective camera uh, selected. So the, the standard camera that comes with thread with the standard tone mapping and everything. Um, and we have the cinematic camera as well. So if I switch, you can see that it looks very different already. So it's brighter. Um, we have a glow um, thing going on here. Uh, it has a different type of tone mapping. Uh, so yeah, very different looks, right? Um, and we'll try to figure out how we got there. But something that I want to show you beforehand, and we have to look at it from the front uh, to see this perfectly. Uh, also depth of field, as you see, that's why I was un unsharp at some areas. Something I wanted to show you, and that's why I'm turning on the lights. You can see the lights as they were in the video. If I switch to the regular camera, and of course the, the, the camera perspective doesn't match as well, but you can already see that it looks way different, right? So if we switch between the cameras, totally different. And that's that's the point that I want to make at the beginning already. It is important to set up your camera so you like the look of your scene. That's what we're going to do. And then create the lights and the effects that you want to create based on the camera setting that you chose for your scene. But I wanted to show you that it's not just the look of the scene that's going to be affected, but of course also lights and everything that, that, that are connected to it. Um, but yeah, let's um, of course not just copy that one, but let's start with the new camera and call it so we see what we have to change uh, cinematic tut, tutorial um, and as you can see not much changes. So it's uh, pretty similar. I think the color might be a bit, bit different, but but that's it. So it's a fresh thread camera. And as I said already, I think one of the biggest changes here is that we um, changed the image processing um, in this in this regards and we went for as you can see physical camera so something that I tend to use with because it's easy to use um, but it also has dependencies but we'll talk about that right so there's the physical camera you can see it's getting darker already there's a lot of stuff you can change one thing that we want to change is turning um, this into aces uh, which is a different color space which allows us to have nicer lights, like uh, a more distinguished dynamic range when you look at lights or very bright uh, objects. So as you can see, uh, we, we changed to ACES 1 and you can see that also there's way different uh, settings, but let's take a look at, at those now. So uh, this is all deriving from regular cameras. So if you're a photographer, you're already well set up to, to work with those parameters. Uh, as you can see, um, chose something around between 1.6 and 2 for the f-stop. So usually I go for 1.8, uh, which is which is quite nice, uh, at least for some of the depth of field effects. Uh, then we have uh, the shutter speed. It's not too important because we are working with very slow movement. And then there is the ISO, which is just uh, a value to uh, influence the brightness of the scene or the the risk, yeah brightness of the, the camera image that is uh, received and put that to 800 and you can see 
Once we put that to 800, it's already getting way brighter and it's already getting way closer to the camera um, that we created here, right? So the, the final out outcome. Let's get back to the camera settings though. Okay, so something that's very important in the general camera settings is the, the field of view or focal length um, is depending on each other. Um, for the field of view, I usually, Fred starts with 40, uh, 45, I usually tend to go lower for shots for cars. Yeah, I think that it looks way better. So, and let me change to window size so we have a full frame or at least something close to it so you can see what I mean, right? So the cars just, it looks different, um, but that would be a full tutorial on a photograph um, or, or how to handle cameras, camera lenses, how to work with them. Uh, so yeah, let's just take that as a reference. It's my preference um, in the area of 28 for the regular car shots, but of course this is different if you do close-ups, if you do uh, interior shots, you need a way wider field of view to cover more content. So this is really just my personal preference. Feel free to use whatever you like for your car shots. You can see that this is depending the focal length, right? So if we change something here, it's going to change that here as well. And this is an interesting part as well because, because we chose on the image processing side, the physical camera, we also have a connection to our depth of field now. So this is not independent. If you use other tone mappers, you are free to change the depth of field and the motion blur values artificially. But if you choose the physical camera, they are connected. So what I'm choosing is always for the depth of field. So we have a real-time depth of field happening all the time. And um, f-stop is custom because I put in the 1.8 um, over here. So it's a uh, 1.8 f-stop. You could also choose from a, from library here, but um, let's go with that one. Focal distance is the value that you change if you double click, right? So if I double click on the, the back of the car, it's, it's choosing that as the uh, focal distance and will be the sharp point with no blur. And whatever I'm double clicking will be the sharpest area where the, the focus distance is uh, defined to. So um, I want to autofocus. Maybe we can change that later when we create the shots. Um, but yeah, for now, let's do autofocus. And by the way, autofocus is focusing on whatever object is in the middle of the uh, viewport, right? So it's now focusing on the, yeah, here on the, on the headlight. If I'm going next to the car, the car will be blurry because I'm focusing on the back of the, yeah, the backdrop, the HD, HDR. So because it's easy to use, let's go for the, the autofocus first. Uh, you have a transition frame time and let's go for medium here. Doesn't matter too much. We will change that for the final shot. Uh, let's see what we did, Ex ultra high actually. And we had a lower transition. So maybe let's just do that. It's a smoother, like it's the frames that it takes to trans uh, to make the transition if you move the camera, right? So that you can see the focus distance is changing all the time. And from one to the other state will be um, the transition frames uh, for that operation. So let's change that to ultra high. This is just the quality of the depth of field. We don't need motion blur for that. And no animation, uh, clipping, I would, Proposed to not have a one here because they're pretty sensitive. So let's do 100. This is millimeters, right? So it's uh, 100 millimeters from the camera. Uh, you could also go for 1000 here, but if you go close to the car, it might cut some some things away. And also, we are very close to some of the stones, and we don't want to them to, them to be clipped as well. So I don't know. Let's go for 100, um, and that should be fine. Uh, for now. So still let's take a, a comparison. Um, looks different, right? So it's still, it's brighter. There's something with the tone mapping that we need to change. Um, color correction. Let's take a look here. So we already see, so this is uh, an option to just change color or do some color correction operations inside of your camera. Um, pretty easy. In this case, we just made the image warmer. So the lower this white balance value, the colder 
uh, the image gets. So let's let's see that okay. pretty pretty cold and then blue, right? Or yeah, it's basically like bringing in bluish values or the other way around, which is going more into orange and warmer um, warmer values. Uh, as you can see with uh, the camera that I've set up for the final for the final scene, we we've been landing at seven thousand one hundred and sixty eight. So pretty close to where we are right now. Let's try to get that done. Okay, we're at 69 now, should be fine. Um, yeah, so that's that's why the, the cameras look different in terms of the overall um, color of the scene. And then of course, we also added a glow. And that's something that we need to revisit later on anyways. So um, we can check, as you can see, the, there's different values, but the glow will be adjusted based on the lights. So this is something that I will leave out for now and we'll come back when we do uh, the lights later because if you see, we turn that off, has a heavy effect on the lights, also on the background a little bit and on the reflections and the highlights of the scene. But I can warn you up front that I had to manipulate the value, the threshold value quite a bit to selectively chose, choose what I want to be gl uh, glowing and whatnot. So that's one thing. And I remember that I put in a fog as well. I don't think the fog is too important. What I did with that fog is making sure that it's a little bit of a distance fog and a, and a ground fog just to blur towards the distance, especially in those shots. Um, towards those um, yeah, those areas of the HDR a little bit. So yeah, let's quickly set it up maybe. So it's white. The density must be very, uh, very low. So you can see, obviously. So you can see if we turn it on, we are, it's pretty foggy. So what we need to do first is reducing the, the density. As you can see, went down to 0.2. And you can see that this is adding a little bit of a fog uh, here. So you have different ways of fall off. Of course, let's take a realistic uh, distance. I don't want I don't want it to start directly at the camera. So what I chose in the other camera is three thousand as a distance. So it starts after three meters, which might be even too uh, too low, but it worked out. So let's go for that one. Um, I added noise uh, noise intensity as you can see here. So just to break it up and don't make it an even, um, even fog. So make it a bit more hydrogenous. You can still see that it's, uh, it's working out quite nicely. And scale the noise size because I think that's important to quickly show. If we go to the intensity, if we put that up, you can see it better, right? This doesn't look very good uh, because it's it's not like the size and, and everything is not um, you need to scale that up and if we put that to five it is still foggy but it has like bigger patches of fog with lighter small holes in the fog which i think is way more realistic right so always make sure that you're not um yeah have, using noise with with too low um, value of fog and I think that's fine so that's that's what I did more or less for the other camera as you can see so yes the values are a bit different but and then there's a little bit of height, uh, height uh, fog enabled as well again as you can see a pretty bright pretty heavy fog so also here we need to reduce the intensity and uh, play around with some of the values so we are reducing the density quite a bit, but we'll see that there's another value that we use, uh, which will influence it. So let's put it up. Um, min and max is the, the volume that you define or the height that you define. So it's starting at zero in the scene. It shouldn't be that high. It shouldn't be a meter. Um, let's go for maybe 30 centimeters or something. So pretty low. Um, yeah, took 35 here. Maybe we do 40. So again, this is millimeters, right? That's why we have the 400. So for this, I didn't choose any uh, noise. We could do that as well, right? So we would have the same the same stuff um, or the same, th same things that we could have done with the, with the distance fog, but I decided not to do it. And 
just use this blend range, which is which is very important uh, to define the fall off. And I always uh, I almost max this out, right? So I'm going to 90 maybe. And now you can see we have a very slight uh, ground fog. And this is not even made or used in the sense of ground fog. It's more to like have an effect on the environment. And I think that was why why I chose it, especially in this area. So it, it breaks it a little bit up and makes it not as clear. Lens flares, we keep them on because they're important. And let's see where we landed. So let's take a similar, turn off the lights first, because they might make a difference still. And we have a wrong field of view on that one. So, so that one should be 28. And get it similar. Pretty good. I think that should be pretty fine now. So that's what we wanted to achieve um, in the first place, right? So now our camera has proper image processing with physical camera parameters set up so they make sense. And something that's very important is select the sensor response ACES because we get a better dynamic range when we look at very bright areas like the, the headlights and the rear lights. Um, I might have done some blending even. Yep, that might be a good trick for you as well. One of the small subtle effects. Uh, you can uh, choose a vignette here and you can see that it's very exaggerated in the first place. So this is also something that we need to like dial down a little bit. As you can see, just change the, uh, the amount. Um, just made it brighter. 35 or something, right? This is an effect that shouldn't be too visible. And this is something you could also do in compositing. But if we are, as we are talking about real time uh, scenes, um, yeah, that was a small thing that I did as well. Uh, besides that, we have color correction. Um, we will turn on glow eventually and, and make sure that that works. We used the fog uh, in the image processing and we turn on lens flares, but the lens flares will be defined and, uh, at the light. So we don't need, we only need to turn them on in the camera. Uh, so you, you can see it's quite a bit that we changed. Also the lens attributes, we made sure we are somewhere around 28 for the field of view or 48 for focal length. We already have set up the, the, the physical camera settings, which are now connected to our depth of field and our motion blur. So you need to keep that in mind. If I'm changing this up here, it's not only changing the effect on my motion blur, but it's also changing the brightness of the image because that's what I'm, because it's connected to the, to the, the tone mapping piece. And that's actually what would happen with a real camera as well. So it's a pretty, Pretty cool feature for everybody who is uh, into photography. Okay, I think that's it for the first part. There will be a second part about the camera animation. Um, but yeah, this is to set up the basic camera um, for now. And hopefully the next video will be coming soon. Uh, as I said, I'll do my best to be quicker now with the break. It wasn't intended uh, to be there. So uh, thank you everybody. I hope it was interesting. Thanks for still hanging around here after I had this four weeks of a break. And yeah, let's continue to finish this series together and make sure that we yeah, get this online. So thanks, thanks very much. Uh, as always, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss uh, the next videos. And yeah, uh, thank you very much and look out for the next animation, uh, camera animation video and have a great day everybody. Thank you.